Not much to say, you know the title, you know what's going on. Today I'm ranking every boss in Super Mario 3D World. They will be ranked on difficulty, design, and engagement. If the boss has a good amount of difficulty, matched with a good pace and engaging fight, and an overall good design, they will be at the top of the list, number 1. And bosses without these traits will be at the bottom. Also, the level before the boss has no effect on its placement, and bots bliss, boss blitz boss fights do not count as the bosses are almost the exact same, which some of them actually are. So with that being said, here is every boss in Super Mario 3D World ranked. Number 18, Charge and Chuck Blockade. This fight is extremely easy, boring, has a lazy, a lazy design, and is not at all engaging. There isn't much to say for this boss, as it is a mid-boss, so I guess you could say it isn't meant to be too hard, but this is ridiculous. The fight can be completed without even moving the joystick of your controller. Just jump, ground pound, and then ground pound again, and boom, you've completed the whole entire fight. It is also a lazy, lazy mid-boss design, because the fight is literally just two basic enemies, two charging shocks. So no extra design effort, and since it's so easy, it doesn't include any unique mechanics, so, the Charge and Shock Blockade will be placing last on this list and is the worst boss in Super Mario 3D World. Number 17, Big Galoomba Blockade. Again, this boss has the same problem as the previous boss, except it's a little more entertaining and challenging. With power up, this is an easy win. But without the power up, this boss can actually be a bit challenging. You have to do a ground pound on the Galoomba's head, or jump on their head twice to kill the three Galoombas. But the only problem is, is you can easily grab a power up or two from the Toad Houses all around the world. It has no design and is literally just three big enemies, but this is a mid boss again, so this is supposed to have the most in depth design, so I guess you could say that. Number 16 Charge and Shock Blockade is back. It's the same thing as the first Charge and Shocks, but this time there's five. Wow. It is fun though to ground pound all these guys and try not to hit the ground, so I'll give it that. Other than that though, this boss is just like all the others so far. It's not that engaging, a lazy design, and it's supposed to be there because it's a mid boss. And this one's a little bit harder than the last, so I guess that's why it's here. A repetitive list, I know. Number 15, Magikuba Blockade. Now, finally, a boss that fits its position. Magikuba Blockade is a mid boss in Super Mario 3D World and is actually the only mid boss so far that actually isn't too bad. It's got a bit of difficulty with the enemies attacking with projectiles, and with three balls of magic flying around, this can get a little bit difficult. Due to the Magikuba's teleporting around and all the projectiles causing chaos, the fight is somewhat more engaging. It lacks pop in mechanics because it's so simple to kill the Magic Koopas. As for the design, it's still lazy, but because of the added difficulty and it being a little more engaging and fast paced, this will land it above the other bosses so far at the number 14 spot. Number 14, Prince Bully Blockade. Not the hardest mid boss, but he has a goofy design and it works. The mechanic to defeat him is really fun too and engaging, and has an overall good pace to it. Just if he could have been somewhat more difficult and difficult boss, he would have been so much higher on the list. It's so sad to see it because this boss has so much potential. Number 13, Prince Bully Blockade is back. Literally the exact same boss as number 14, but this time he's blue and shoots three blue fireballs instead of one that's just reddish orange. Nothing much to say really here except three fireballs make it a little more difficult so it'll be at number 13 instead of number 14. Number 12, Roller Blockade. This boss is just three brolders and despite me being pretty hard on the mid bosses so far, this one isn't too bad, not too bad at all. Fighting the Brolders like Prince Bully is a very fun, engaging, and greatly paced mechanic, and just an interesting fight. The throwing mechanic is pretty fun, and can be somewhat challenging. Not the most difficult, just more annoying. 
creepy design of a mechanic, but of course, lazy design since the boss is literally just three basic enemies, but still, the mechanic carries this fight to the number 11 spot, just short of the top 10. If it wasn't for this mechanic and it was just annoying, then no way the, the Brolder blockade would have been number 12. It's a good thing that Nintendo ma was able to make this mechanic just straight fun and a little bit annoying, but they were able to balance it out pretty good. Number 11, World 2 Boom Boom. Now for the first real boss on this list, we have World 2 Boom Boom. This fight is pretty mad on the difficulty scale, with the spinning shell I guess causing new players problems with the mechanics, but for any barely above average player, just to stand in one spot and jump over the shell when it comes by with no difficulty at all. Landing hits is also pretty easy as Boom Boom is pretty slow to start attacking with this thing too. As for the engagement of this fight, it's not the worst, but maybe something else in the fight could have been added. Like, maybe some extra enemies, or something shooting fireball on the side of the room, or just anything that could have been a little more intense. Finally, the design is technically just Boom Boom to a from the older Mario game, but still, the tag is new and his 3D design is also new, so I'll give him that. With all that said, this fight lands just barely under the top 10 at the number 11 spot, but still pretty high on the list, so good job, Boom Boom, I guess. Number 10, World 6 Boom Boom. I guess he does make it in the top 10, as World 6 Boom Boom will be at number 10, just barely in there. This fight is literally the exact same as the last one, except there's an extra shell after you land one hit, and two shells along with Boom Boom when you land the second hit, that's it. All the same negatives and all the same positives in this fight, and two extra shells for added difficulty, which is why World 6 Boom Boom slips over the fight in World 2 at the number 10 spot. Number 9, Pom Pom. Pom Pom, though on paper sounds like a very easy boss, she surprisingly can be quite challenging. She'll transform into clones of herself, and each clone will throw a boomerang at Mario. And your job is to find the real pom pom and stomp on her head to deal damage. Surprisingly, a bit harder than boom boom. It's still a bit too easy in my opinion. The engagement of this fight is really good as you're forced to swap the pink boomerang with the pom pom, and which is the real one. Avoid all the boomerangs and then land a hit on her head. It's not the most crazy design for a boss, nor the hardest boss fight, but it's an engaging fight that'll keep you on your toes and pretty fun in my opinion. So. Number 8, King Gathunk. One of my personal favorite bosses, King Gathunk comes in at number 8 on this list. He's a very unique boss with a very unique design. He will attack by rotating around in the arena and trying to crush you, and your job is to make the king land on his face to land an attack on his back. It can be somewhat difficult trying to avoid the outer square and plus the tiny square in the middle, and plus not trying to fall off when King Gathunk removes the bits of the stage in later phases. And as for engagement, it's okay, as the fight is decently fast-paced and intense, though it could maybe be a bit better if King of Thunk was maybe a bit more mobile, and maybe spawn more enemies, or any enemies for that matter. Or what really would have been interesting is that the stage, in the last stage of the fight, there's only one square left, so it gets really intense, and you have to dodge King of Thunk quite in tight corners with no real space to move around. I think that would have been a big difficulty boost and put him way higher on the list, but that's just my opinion. Number 7, Motley Boss Block. The fight after World 6 and the fight in Bowser will emerge into one boss fight as all that changes is a tiny bit of difficulty increase, being there are now a few more electric lines and the block is gold. This one boss isn't too hard, but the sheer design and engagement is what carries it. Mommy Boss Bob is a little wizard dude that uses his goo or magnetic matter, whatever you want to call this stuff, to create his big blob monster. He'll then stomp around trying to crush Mario until he jumps one too many times and explodes. Kind of weird, but which will leave all these little dude and it made them double cherry pie or something, and they really suck. This is a chance to attack with jumping on his head and a hit. It doesn't sound amazing to find on paper, but this fight is actually all around pretty okay. 
could probably be a bit better, but it's still a fair amount there. Design is very interesting. One cool idea in the whole blob look, and because there's a lot going on in a pretty fast paced fight, this one makes me all around very solid boss fight. Landing it in number 7 spot. Number 6. Boss Brolder. Boss Brolder is a big crystal boulder that has a lot of minions that he'll use to try and crush you. What he doesn't know is that Mario can stomp on the minion's head and then use them to throw back at Mr. Brolder to deal damage. This mechanic is actually really fun to play with, as I mentioned earlier in the Brolder blockade, but you want to be careful aiming your throws because it can be a little challenging to try and aim them. But not to, point, not to the point where it's too challenging where you want to rip your hair out like some other mechanics in, mecha in Mario games. Looking at you, Bubble Mechanic from Super Mario Galaxy, that was quite painful. Boss Brolder, though may lack intensity being a slower fight, a fun mechanic, good amount of difficulty, and solid design will carry this boss to the number 6. Number 5, Histocrat. By far the community's favorite boss, Histocrat places just barely in the top 5 of this list. This boss is a snake that lives in the sand with all his buddies, and rains rocks from the sky. It's a very fun fight, one of, if not the most fun in the game. Along with a creative fresh mechanic, climbing up the smaller snakes, and then diving on a Histocrat's head to deal damage. So far it might sound good for Histocrat, the engagement is good with a wacky interesting fight, it's really fun and has a good mechanic too. How isn't this boss number one, you might be asking? Well, uh, the difficulty, um... It uh, isn't really there. Like, at all. Avoiding the raining rocks from the sky, and even the fireballs in the second fight, is just way too easy. And all that's there, and it's all that's there, really, is for difficulty in this fight. There are some snakes that instead of having platforms to stand on, they'll just chomp Mario's butt if you stand on them. But they're super easy to avoid because they stick their eyes out of the sand, unlike the snakes with plates who don't. So the difficulty is the only thing holding Histocrat back, which really sucks because if this fight was harder, this would have easily been an all-time great Mario boss. Um, but there's nothing I can really do about that. I wish they would have changed it, but he'll have to stick at number five for now. But he'll have to stick at number five for now. By the way, the fight in World 3 and the fight in World Bowser will be merged as one boss fight for Histocrat, as all that changes is a tiny little bit of difficulty increase, where instead of rocks falling from the sky, there's blue fireballs, and that makes that make a patch of lava on the ground. They're not blue, uh, just regular fireballs. But what isn't regular is the snake's pink now. <laughs> or should I say she's pink? Um, I don't know. Regardless, the two Histocrat fights are the same situation as Mountly Boss Blob. Number 4, World 1 Bowser. This fight is definitely the hardest yet, but of course, as maybe it has become a theme with this game, the fight still isn't too hard. It is however a fun fight kicking bombs at Bowser and his Bugatti Chiron per sport, if you know what I mean. This is a really fun mechanic that not only works well, but is very easy to use. The idea of bombs going flying as soon as Mario touches them could have flopped and just been really annoying but I think it works really well. Despite being auto-scroller, this fight somehow man maintains to not be too long. Overall, Bowser from World 1 is a great start to the game and sets up the rest of the game with its fun, somewhat challenging, and cool mechanic to a well for success. Number 3, World 7 Bowser, or World Bowser Bowser Fight. We won't spend too much time on this one, as World 7 slash Castle Bowser is almost the exact same as World 1, which seems weird, as this is meant to be the fake final boss, so why are they almost the same? Well, I'll never know. The fights are only different because of some different terrain. Bowser's spitting out much more fireballs, and he's upgraded his Bugatti, of course. These changes make the fight a little more ongoing, so the engagement category goes down, but the difficulty category for World 7 Bowser is quite a bit ahead of World 1. As the terrain changes and more fireballs, Bowser is surprisingly making it a lot harder than you think. We've been recording this, I died a couple times trying to get the video for what you're seeing right now, so there's that. 
With that said, World 7 Bowser makes it onto the podium, finishing third on this list. Number 2. Boulder Blockade is back. Despite this boss almost being a direct remake of Boss Boulder, it is actually much better. There's only one change between Boss Boulder and this fight, but it simply makes the fight a whole lot more tricky. And it's the addition of these two lava bubbles. They roll around the platform pretty fast and target Mario. They will leave a trail of lava behind them that lasts for a few seconds too, making this a pretty decently big jump in difficulty from the original Boss Boulder fight. The engagement is a bit better, with the added chaos with the fireballs, but the design loses a bit of points as the, this fight is almost a straight up copy of Boss Builder from World 4. The idea of adding minions, or other weaker enemies than the main boss, is something that Nintendo should do more in my opinion, and is a big part of why Boss Builder is worse than Builder Blockade is back. And number one, Meowser. And shockingly, here we are, the number one best boss in Super Mario 3D World is Meowser, the final boss in the game. Meowser is an extremely long boss that's an auto-scroller, which usually isn't a good thing, but in this case, the auto-scrolling fight is a cinematic masterpiece. The perfect difficulty, not overly difficult, but still tricky enough to trip up any player regardless of your skill. One of the best designed bosses in Nintendo history, being unique, fun and overall just interesting as you don't know what's coming up next in the last section of the fight, oh, just chef's kiss. And don't forget the engagement, which this fight is full of, as the boss is just full of fun and storytelling matched with an intense atmosphere, which is why I put it as the number one best boss in Super Mario 3D World. Number 3. Well, that was a lot. Four pages and a half was the length of this video's script, which is one of my longest. But all that made me realize that I simply wish Nintendo bosses were a bit more difficult. Nintendo, Nintendo certainly has, hasn't struggled with making fun bosses, but if they could all be a bit, little, little bit harder, not too much, but a bit harder, I think it'd make the next Mario game a lot more popular. So why wouldn't Nintendo do it? Anyways. I really like this game and enjoyed making this list, so if you want more 3D World content, then please leave a like and comment what you thought of this list. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.